Even though we're all in different stages of life, we all want the same things, time and money. The problem is, in most cases, if you have one, you probably don't have the other. I talk so much about saving money, how important it is, and I even talk about the problems with saving money, but I haven't really taken the time to sit down and talk to you about how much money you should have saved by a certain age, like your specific age right now. And the funny thing about age and money is there's people of all ages making drastically different amounts of money. The old making more than the young the young making more than the old. There's 20 year old millionaires, there's geniuses, anomalies, there's the rich, the middle class, the poor. Then there's you. How much money do you need to save at your current age? Let's find out. Let me ask you something. You know that feeling you get when it looks like everyone around you is just doing so well for themselves and it just really seems like they're just all out having a good time without any care in the world, but then you look back at yourself and you really don't even know where you stand in all of this? Yeah, I have too and here's the thing, it does seem like that, but I'm here to tell you this, what you see is an illusion. Because there's no real standard, no outline, no nothing. Most of us really have no idea where we should be financially and all we really have to go by is statistics which can be commonly found on the internet which means absolutely nothing when you consider the fact that we all live in different areas with different costs of living. And we have different amounts of debt, the amount of money we make is different, we have different habits and different amounts of discipline, and we're different people. And the same is true for the people in your age group and the people who live around you. If you take a look at people between the ages of 21 to 25, you're bound to get drastically different types of people who make different types of money. Some of them really cherish having fun and because of that, their only real focus is to have fun right now because they feel like they have the rest of their lives to catch up later. On the other hand, we have some of them who are more responsible and are dedicated and have a specific goal that they want to achieve in life. Some of them just wanna do the bare minimum to get by in life. Some might have been working full time since they graduated from high school while others went to university or community college. Some aren't really doing anything at all and they're just existing. So to give you an exact dollar amount to represent where everyone should be financially is impossible and frankly irresponsible. And that's where I think the problem is. That's why I think people feel stuck and compare themselves to others financially because they don't really know where they should be because there is no standard. So I created this video to serve as a guideline because in my opinion, this answer can't be found in a Google search. Check this out, if you're in your early to mid 20s, or we'll even say if you're between the ages of 18 and 25, here's what I want you to know. You're at an awkward stage in life where you're actually an adult, but you're not expected to really make any money right now. But that's where the trouble starts. Since you're not expected to have money, it's very easy to go through this extremely important stage of your life truly believing that it's okay not to have money while also being in tens of thousands of dollars in debt. Because that's what the statistics say for your age group. Are you okay with that? Because I know I wouldn't be okay with that if I learned that at 18. I wouldn't have been for that. And what this creates is a dependent mindset which turns into something much worse in the future if it's not corrected within this age range. Now I'm not sure why, but something that we were not taught growing up is this. There is no reason that your age should limit your ability to make money. Age only affects how you make your money. Rewind that and listen to it again. Now, obviously, if you're a high school student, you're not about to go work for a corporate office while you're in high school making six figures. But who's to say that you can't learn a skill, any skill, literally like, uh, I don't know, painting houses and monetize off of that skill? Who's to say you can't do that? And the thing about that is, if you're in this age range, something that you have on your side is time. And I would recommend that if you are in the age range to check out my passive income video if you haven't already. Now here's my financial advice. This is the age where you should start building habits like tracking your spending, knowing exactly how much you make after taxes, and understanding the cost of living in your area compared to how much you make. This is also where you should have a credit card that you use moderately so you can build your credit because credit is gonna be super important in the years to come. The average credit score for the age group is only 630 and I would say this, I would say aim for a credit score of 700 or above which is totally doable. 
And a big message behind this entire video is don't aim to be average. So when I give you averages, I'm gonna always tell you to aim above that. Because here's the thing, you clicked on this video which tells me that you wanna better yourself, which tells me that you're not an average person and you work hard. You work too hard to be average. You feel what I'm saying? It's time to learn things like what assets and liabilities are because you'll be dealing with them for the rest of your life. And if you don't wanna end up like most adults having more money in their liabilities and their assets, then listen and closely. I know a lot of people in this age group do not make money or at least not a lot of money, but dude, you don't have to have a job to make money. That's exactly why I made my side hustle video which shows you how anyone at any age can take advantage of what is needed in the market just by simply looking at what season it is, by simply assessing your environment. And you can do these things very easily and it will require very little of your time. That said, those of you who are making money, like let's say you're working a full-time job, make sure you set yourself up for success early by setting up a retirement account. You would be surprised at just how many grown men and women over the ages of 40 who I've personally helped set up their 401ks that have never had retirement accounts before. And what you've been waiting for is how much do I need to have saved? So I'm gonna tell you because it's very, very simple. What you need to have saved is enough to make sure you don't have to rely on anyone. So if you're living with your parents, I'd recommend having enough so you can move out plus two to three months of rent. And I would recommend that you move in with some roommates so that you're not spending more than you're making on your rent. And if you are living on your own, whether it's living by yourself in an apartment or if you live with roommates, do the same thing. Have two to three months worth of living expenses because that's a really good rule of thumb for that age group. That'll put you way ahead of the curve. But again, this is between the ages of 18 to 25. So everything that I'm recommending, understand that it's not going to happen overnight. Those are just the goals that I think you should aim for. Now we're going to talk about the ages of 26 to 30 because this is where things get interesting. Typically within this age range, a lot of things start to happen like marriages, having kids, and this is also the age range where the salary starts to increase. But this is also where the majority of us give in to lifestyle creep. I mean, think about it. At this point, it's really starting to feel like you're living the American dream. Your career starting to kick off. You're starting to have certainty for what you want to do for the rest of your life. You may be living in a household with dual income and things can be really starting to look great for you, which will give you the false thought of, I made it. Wrong. Here's the thing, that's an illusion and if your life isn't anything like what I just described yet you're in the age range of 26 to 30 then that just further proves my point. It's easy to look at those who are getting married and they're starting to have kids with good careers and they just bought a new car and they just look so happy. It's easy to look at them and then look at yourself and say wow, they're really successful. Why am I not further along? Like I said, I've been there, but despite what it looks like, most people in this age range don't even know what I'm about to tell you, and that's this. In this age group, your focus should be around the discipline that you established in your 20s when it came to living below your means and knowing how much you make in relation to the cost of living in your area. Having the mentality of living below your means is what's going to help you keep your expenses the same despite the fact that you may be making more now. And you know what you do with the extra money? You save and invest the difference. There's also a lot of hasty decisions that I want anyone in this age group to be very cautious of because we're all human and we have emotions. And sometimes it's easy to get into the mood where we're like, oh my gosh, we're so in love. Let's go get married. Let's go spend $30,000 on a wedding. Oh my gosh, we just had a baby. So now the family's getting bigger. So now we need to go out and buy a big SUV. When you know good and well that four-door Honda Civic was more than enough. See, we tell ourselves that we need things that are really just wants. You know you don't really need that SUV, and I'm not even making fun here. I'm just being honest. With that said, this is what you should aim for in this age group. They say you should aim to have one year of your full salary saved by this age, yet the median salary for people under the age of 35 is just over $13,000. So being that the range of below 35 includes all ages, let's say between 18 to 34, it's easy to see why I have a very big issue with the idea of throwing a bunch of numbers in a blender and saying, here, go ahead and drink this. You know what I'm saying? That's about unhealthy, low key. It's because as the ages go up, 
the amount of money that you should have saved and invested is also going to go up. And there's going to come a time where that number hits a certain point that it's so high that in order to reach that number that you need to have saved, you're going to be required to make more to hit that number. What's wrong with that? Good question. I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with that. Let's say that we have a guy. Let's say his name is Jack. He is 27 years old and he's like, hey, I'm Jack and I make $87,000 a year. Sounds good, right? But then let's say you have a 26 year old and, and her name is Jill and Jill makes $100,000 a year. Sounds even better, right? Jack lives in Texas. Jill lives in California. So now you realize that technically Jack can save a bigger portion of his income per year than Jill can. And that's because what I'm factoring in here is the cost of living. Like in Texas, the cost of living is cheap. So Jack is over there making the killing, just making $87,000 a year, which is a very good wage. But if he were making that in California, he'd be drowning. Like Jill over there in California, she's not going to be able to save really anything because California is ridiculous. And Jill's basically making minimum wage over there which therefore means in most cases, Jack is able to save much more of a salary than Jill is. So if Jill based how much she should have saved compared to what Jack has saved, she'd be depressed. And if Jack bases overall earnings on how much Jill makes, he would be about depressed. And knowing that most adults, like 59% of adults live paycheck to paycheck, and honestly, a big reason is because of debt and having expensive bills that take up majority of their paychecks, I think it's more important that you focus on living frugally and living in an area at a cheaper cost so that you can focus on saving a full year salary if you live in a location that has a not so ridiculous cost of living. Or if you do live in a location with a stupidly inflated cost of living like California, I would say that the focus should be more on saving a full year's worth of expenses as opposed to a full year's salary. And that brings me to my next point. When you're between the ages of 26 and 30, I would highly recommend that you have at least one side hustle that brings in extra income every single month. Because at the end of the day, that'll make your life worlds easier when you have more money coming in that can help you pay down bills and really save and invest more especially when it comes to paying off debt, because in reality, most of us are in debt. And I think it's a very attainable goal to reach and aim to be debt free by the age of 30. And having a side hustle can help you do just that. Now, not everybody's going to be able to completely get out of debt at 30. And I understand that. But I'm just saying for this, for the sake of this video, aim for it. But as all that madness is going on, the retirement account that you set up when you were in your early 20s, that account has been adding up steadily every single year and it doesn't take long to add up at all because especially when you consider the fact that companies tend to match you at a certain percentage then it really adds up quickly then and if i had to guess i'd say that the median net worth for most people below the age of 30 is so low because they probably skipped that step now if we're looking at ages 31 and up the only real thing that changes is the simple fact that the net worth expectation goes up and it's largely because of one of two things, if not both of these two things. One, having a household of dual income, or two, the fact that there's yet another salary increase within this age range. Not to mention the fact that this is where a lot of folks start to buy houses and that gets added on to their overall net worth. And the overall goal in terms of how you should think about your money is literally word for word the exact same as what it would have been between the ages of 26 to 30. But I want you to take my unique perspective on the ages of 31 and up because I don't think anyone really thinks about it like this. Life happens and sometimes there's career changes, whether that's stepping down from an upper management role so you can spend more time with your kids. Or maybe you decided to go back to school and do a complete 180 in your career change. Who knows? But either way you look at it, it may or may not affect the numbers that you should have saved by a certain age. And the whole reason I'm telling you that is because if you start working from, let's say, 20 years old all the way to retirement age, so basically 66, you're not going to be making that same flat rate the whole time. It's expected to go up, but I just want you to understand that sometimes it can even fluctuate. Now, in your 40s, this is where things start to pick up, and this is why I'd really encourage you to start doing what I call millionaire math. And this is outside of whatever income streams you have, whether it's a business or a side hustle or your job. Outside of all those income streams, you need to focus on what you really need to live comfortably every single year by the time you hit retirement. But I want you to be aware of this. Between the ages of 40 and 49, there's a lot of variables. For one, there's insanely high divorce rates, which can cause financial setbacks. There's also the variable of possibly buying a bigger house. And a big variable could be helping your kids out with their financial needs because let's face it, people within this age group, they, they have a ton of different variety when it comes to kids. Like some of their kids are grown, 
like out of the house grown, whereas some 40 to 49 year olds have toddlers running around. You just don't know. And I say that to say this, all in all, despite what it may look like, people in this age range are not as financially stable as they look. You want to know something crazy? Most people between the ages of 25 to 34, those are the ones who have more disposable income than any other age group, and they feel like they're the most financially stable. And somewhere between the ages of 35 all the way to 64, that number takes a dip. And if I had to guess why, I'd say it's probably due to the decisions they made when they were younger or their decisions not to do something like setting up a 401k at 20 years old, for example. There's the decision of getting divorced. There's the decision of, oh, I'm going to spend, 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 because right now I'm making more money than I've ever made in my entire life. But then there's also the decision that, you know what? I'm spending too much time at work. I need to step down and take a pay cut so I can have less responsibility at work, so I can have more free time to spend with my family. These things happen. Anyway, back to the millionaire math. I'm going to break this down for you really fast, all right? Between the ages of 40 to 49, if you're living comfortably on what you're currently making, meaning that you have a decent amount of money left over after you've paid all your bills and you're able to save and invest and even spend money on whatever you want to and you're really living comfortably right now, that's what I'm talking about. And let's say for you that number is $70,000 a year. Being that you've built good habits from your 20s all the way up to now, theoretically speaking, you should have investments in multiple places, including your retirement account. But now it's time to really start thinking about, and even before now, it's really time to start thinking about how much you need to have invested to earn $70,000 a year based off of the interest of what you have invested. And for that, you're going to have to have millions of dollars invested, which if you followed all the advice so far, you would be well on track to having millions invested. And for the sake of this example, I know for a rule of thumb, if you want to earn $60,000 a year from the interest of your investments, you need to have about $1.5 million invested at a 6 to 7% rate of return. So if you wanted to earn $70,000 a year based off of the interest of your investments, you would need a good $1.825 million invested. I'm doing this math in my head, so I may be wrong, but it's pretty close to what it should be. And also in your 40s, a good rule of thumb is to double what you saved in your 30s, which should have been a full year's salary or a full year's worth of expenses. Like this will be across multiple assets. So you might have liquid cash that you have access to at any given time of the day, but you also have like individual stocks. You might have bonds that you're invested to. You might have ETFs outside of just your 401k. You'll have multiple different assets that you have your money into. And all those assets together minus your liability should be double what it was in your 30s. That's a good rule of thumb. If you started this young, like as in if you follow all the advice in this video, if you start this stuff young, you can absolutely get there. There's no reason why you shouldn't because it's the whole point is regularly investing and saving your money on a consistent basis without fail. That's what gets you to those numbers that I'm talking about. They sound big, but... This happens over the course of 20, 30, 40 years. And you know what? If you can invest more earlier on, invest more, you'll only reach the numbers quicker. Which is why I advocate for side hustles and passive income because that's only going to help you in the future. So between the ages of 50 all the way to 66, your job is to make sure you have that $1.8 million invested or however much you need invested to live comfortably for the rest of your life just based off of the interest of what you have invested. So this isn't where you start, oh my gosh, I'm getting close to retirement. I'm going to max out my 401k. Like, yeah, do that if you haven't maxed it out prior to. But I should have mentioned this earlier. What I would recommend is that in your late 30s, maybe your, your mid to late 30s, that's where you should aim to start maxing out your 401ks. Because that's typically an age where you're going to be able to do so. That money's just going to compound over and over and over again. And that money's going to add up a lot quicker than if you didn't max it out. Now, here's another point of leverage. Assuming that you haven't had a bunch of the setbacks that I've listed before, this can be a really beneficial time of your life when, you know, the house is about to get paid off if it's not paid off already. Kids are almost always out of the house, which means you can focus on your other financial goals. And this is where you should aim to save as much as possible. You know, it's good to save 20, 30 percent, but I want you to aim for 40 percent, 50 percent. You know, if your house paid off 60 percent, 70 percent, see how much you can actually get up to, because that is going to help you that much more in the future. And it's all the things that you started doing at the young age of 20 something that gets you to this point right here. 
And I'm talking about the point where you hit 60 something and you have 10 years of expenses or even in some cases your salary saved. And that's on top of your other investments. You know what I'm saying? So that right there is what gives you that wealth that can last generations. That's why I'm always telling you to save your money, not just to hold it hostage in a saving account with little to no return, but to diversify it. You can have some in your saving account, have some in some individual stocks, have some in some ETFs, have some in some 401ks, Roth IRAs. Having that diversification is what makes, that's what creates wealth. That's being productive and being cold with your money. And you know what? If you do these things from a young age, the older you will thank you later because you're going to actually be able to retire at a decent age. And in a lot of cases, early retirement. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.